In this video, we're going to answer questions where we're asked to find roots of polynomials. A root of a polynomial is just a value you can plug in so that the output of the polynomial will be zero. So what x can I plug in that will make this polynomial give me a zero? So really, what we're trying to do then is to take the formula that defines the polynomial and ask when is it zero. So I want to solve the equation x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals zero. There are several ways to do that. This is one that's easy enough to work out by factoring, so let's do that. I can factor x squared minus 5x plus 6 into x minus 3 times x minus 2 because negative 3 and negative 2 add together to give me negative 5 and they multiply together to give me positive 6. So that's how I can factor the left side and then if I have a product of two numbers giving me 0, one of them has to be 0. So either the number x minus 3 is 0 or the number x minus 2 is 0 and consequently we can see either x is 3 or x is 2. And those are the two roots of this polynomial. Those are the two values we can plug in to output a 0. Another approach instead of factoring might have been to use the quadratic formula. That would have worked just as well. Uh, we will tend to use factoring when we can just because it's easier. Uh, like in this example, again I want to know when the output will be 0. So I take the formula that defines my polynomial, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. And this is only a binomial. It has two terms, not three terms. So it's actually easier to factor. I definitely see that I can pull an x out from both terms. And actually, I can pull out a little bit more because both of these coefficients, 6 and 9, are divisible by 3. So I can pull out 3x. And doing that leaves behind 2x on the first term and just a 3 on the second term. So now again I have two things multiplied together and I can see that either 3x is 0 or 2x plus 3 is 0 and isolating the x's uh, divide both sides by 3, 0 divided by 3 is 0 and then if I isolate the x in the second equation I move the 3 over and get 2x equals negative 3 and that can be rewritten as x equals negative 3 over 2. So x equals 0 and x equals negative 3 halves are the two roots for this polynomial. Sometimes we have to find roots of a cubic polynomial. Now in the old days, say turn of the 20th century, students actually learned how to do this in algebra classes. But it's something that we don't do a whole lot of in, anymore, so students don't learn formulas like a version of the quadratic formula for cubic equations. Uh, instead, we're only going to be able to solve these in special cases where we're able to somehow reduce it to simplify it so that it's just solving a quadratic. How could we do that? Well, Again, I want to solve the same problem as before. Take the polynomial and set it equal to 0. And if I use the same approach that I used in the previous question and I try to factor something out, I'm going to see that each of these terms has a power of x that can be pulled out. And each of the coefficients is a multiple of 3, so that can be pulled out. So I can pull out 3x, and that leaves behind what? So I pulled out the 3, that's gone. I, x cubed, I pulled out an x, that leaves x squared. And then on the second term, from 3x squared, I pulled out 3x, that leaves just x. And then on the last term, I pulled the x out, and then negative 60, I pull out the 3, it leaves negative 20. And now we can see why this is better, because 
the expression inside parentheses is just a quadratic, and we already know how to deal with quadratics. We can solve that using techniques we've already talked about. Uh, and again, this is one that we could factor. So I'm going to keep factoring. But again, you could use the quadratic formula instead if you preferred, or if the numbers didn't work out nicely enough for factoring. But let's do it with factoring. This is x plus 5 times x minus 4. Because when I add positive 5 and negative 4, I get positive 1, which is the coefficient I need in front of the x. And when I multiply positive 5 and negative 4, I get negative 20, which is the constant I need. Great. Now, I've completely factored my equation. I have three things that are multiplying together, the result of which is 0. So again, if their product is 0, one of them has to be 0. Either 3x is 0, or x plus 5 is 0, or x minus 4 is 0. So if we isolate x here in the first uh, equation, I get 0, and the second one I get negative 5, and in the last one I get positive 4, and those are the roots. So it was cubic, but we were able to attack it using the same sort of ideas from the previous examples. This last example is going to throw a new twist at us. Uh, this time I have a quartic, and I want to solve the equation x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 equals 0 in order to find the roots of this polynomial. And I can't factor anything out like I did before. I can't factor an x out because, well, the first two terms have a power of x, but the constant term doesn't. There's no x here. So I can't pull an x out, so I'm not going to be able to use the same trick as I did before. Now there's something special to notice about this example. There is an x to the fourth and an x squared, but there's no x cubed and there's no x to the one. So there's something special we can do here. We can solve this by substituting a variable for x squared. I'm going to use the letter u. So I'm going to let u represent x squared. Why do I do that? Well, on the middle term, let me just jump to that right now, the minus 5x squared. Instead of x squared, now I can write u because u represents x squared. Now, how about the x to the fourth? Well, x to the fourth is the same as x squared times x squared. So that's u times u, which is really u squared. So I can use that to rewrite the x to the fourth. Instead of x to the fourth, I can just write u squared. Uh, and then the end of the polynomial was plus 4. There's no variable there, so I don't need to substitute anything. And so now I'm trying to solve this equation, u squared minus 5u plus 4 equals 0. And that's a simple quadratic equation. We know how to solve that. It's not quartic anymore. It's not a fourth power, it's just a second power. So let's solve it. I'm going to factor one more time. So we can factor this as x. Hmm. Can we factor this? Yes, we can. x minus 4 times, or u minus 4 times u minus 1. There we go. Because negative 4 and negative 1 add together to give me negative 5. Negative 4 and negative 1 multiply together to give me positive 4. So this is what I want. So either one of the factors has to be 0. u minus 4 is 0, or u minus 1 is 0. And therefore, u is 4, or u is 1. OK, just like we were doing before, but we're not done this time because that's u, it's not x. Finding the roots of the polynomial means finding the values we can plug in for the variable x. And I figured out values of u that satisfy this equation, but I need to find values of x that satisfy this equation. However, those equations are related because of how we defined u. I know what values of u are allowed. And I can use them in conjunction with the 
equation u equals x squared to figure out what x is. So for example, if u is 4, then that's really saying x squared is 4. So there are two solutions of that, right? x is 2 or x is negative 2. Those are roots. Because u equals 4 is a solution of this equation, x equals 2 and x equals negative 2 are solutions of this equation. And you can see how we're going to finish this. We have to look at the other value for u. We discovered that u could be equal to 1. And if it is, x squared is equal to 1. And then the two solutions of that are x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. And so this time we have four roots. 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 2. And that's what we should expect when we're solving a fourth degree polynomial equation. We typically expect as many as four solutions.